Can we just do a quick intro just so we have it? Sure. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Brian K. Vaughn, co-creator of Paper Girls. I'm Cliff Chang, co-creator of Paper Girls. What was the most fun thing to watch when you know you created a story and now you're seeing it in live action? The best thing is being surprised by it. Uh, seeing the girls, the cast bring the stories to life. Suddenly, you know, having actual girls as opposed to just my drawings, you know, really takes it to another level. And then, you know, there's so much that they were able to add to the story because a comic is, you know, it has to be short and concise, whereas a TV show you can really luxuriate in, in all the time that you have. And they were able to take the story to places that were really just so emotional and hint that you know and flesh out things that we only hinted at in the comic. Uh, also, giant robots. Uh, I mean, it's crazy that we're, we're working on this book. We're like, oh, we have an unlimited budget. We can do things that television never could. And then the showrunners and creators were like, we'll show you. We can do this. And so to see sort of Cliff's biggest, wildest things come to life, is that's pretty cool, too. Um, uh, so a question comic book. Uh, 30 issues. I think we always had, you know, an end in mind. You know, stories are, I think, are best when you have that and, and that they tell a complete arc. And so, you know, 30 issues was what we gave ourselves. I think, you know, sometimes we wondered, is it too much? Is it too little? But um, I think the best part about Paper Girls is, you know, that it ends and it ends on a very specific note, you know, and, and, uh, and that's what I love about it. Yeah, comics are kind of the illusion of the third act usually, where it's like there's always going to be another Spider-Man story next month. <laughs> but endings are what give stories their meaning, and I just think that last page that Cliff drew is so beautiful, so perfect that we're like, much as we would like to keep telling stories with this girl, these girls, this was the end of this story, and I think we it felt right at the time. <laughs> That's very cool. Thank you. Were there any moments? Oh, sorry. Were there any moments from the comics that you're like, this absolutely has to be in, or was there anything being added that you're like, absolutely not? Definitely nothing being added that we didn't approve and we're excited about and we're jealous that we didn't come up yeah. with. I mean, we keep saying that Max Brother is someone that we mention in the comic. We see him once or twice. But uh, this TV show gets to luxuriate in spending time with these two together, and it was so beautiful. We're like, this is incredible. And yeah, no, in terms of what had to be in, um, I felt like it just needed to be these four girls. And, uh, you know, they could grow and change, but we wanted to just have this quartet from very different backgrounds and just the joy of seeing them come together. That had to be in the show. And it's definitely, it's, uh, it's in there deeply. <laughs> Oh, oh. Hmm. Comics and or movies. I mean, I mean, Stand by Me, you know, is something that that we saw as kids, Brian. For sure. I mean, yeah. I, I, look, I love the same stuff as you guys do, Back to the Future. Yeah. But I, I think for us, when we're starting stories, it's always more we're influenced by the people we grew up with and the people in our lives, and sort of reaching deep into ourselves. And we didn't want to do sort of just a pastiche of like, let's put together a bunch of our favorite influences. And it's like, let's took these incredible kids that we grew up with and imagined them in this insane circumstance. So, yeah, my childhood friends were a much bigger influence than any other comic or TV show. How involved were you guys in the casting process? Th thankfully, yeah. very little other than saying it's so hard and this is a worldwide search. I mean, they were literally interviewing girls from every continent. And uh, yeah, I think they waited to uh, show us until they're like, we think we're pretty close. How does this look? And I'm like, what a gift to be yeah. sent those girls and to watch them on tape and to know, well, not only did they look ripped out of the comic, 
but they can act and they fully embody who these girls were. And so, you no, know, we had it really easy. Just they had a, an incredible casting department, uh, an incredible show. So I, I'm thankful because casting can be hard. To have to sit in a room and watch not great actors butcher your work is like, maybe we're terrible writers. So <laughs> I'm grateful that they spared us from that and just went out and hit a home run. Yeah, that's. I mean, uh, yeah. What do you got? I was gonna say Nate is because uh, that's someone who's wholly invented and not from yeah. the comic, and that can sometimes clash when you bring in something that's new. But he felt so organic right away to what we were trying to do. The story is so real that that just every moment with him is a surprise. Yeah, I loved seeing Ali Wong. Uh, she's such a perfect casting for older Aaron, and she's able to bring. You know, uh, she has so much to do in the show. You know, she has to be, you know, a little bit sad and disappointed, but then she also has has to have a little bit of humor as well. And Ali's able to deliver that in spades. And we haven't seen, you know, I don't know if we've seen that kind of, you know, um, you know, that kind of range uh, from her. We didn't know that she had it, and, and it's so cool to see her showcase it here. No, oh, we sure didn't. I mean, this is the, it says you're all wearing masks, you know, how difficult it was, how challenging it was to get these. Uh, no, I think we wanted to give everyone a lot of space. And usually it's like, oh, we can do the creator pop in where we come in. And we're like, no, this is what they're doing is so hard that let's uh, give them some space. But, you know, we get to watch dailies every day as I come in and talk with them. So, uh, but fingers crossed season two, I'd love to bring my kids and ride the bikes uh, around with them. I think we have a similar um, thought process about storytelling, you know, really get to the heart of things and not, you know, just cut away anything that's excessive, you know, like we just really want to, you know, give you a moment and a feeling and then hopefully those moments and feelings add up to, you know, to a great story. You know, we worked together a long time ago and then tried to get back together for like 15 years and then, and this was finally the right time and the right project. What was it like for you guys to see those dailies for the very first time? Very surreal, you know, some of all this stuff lived in our heads for so long and the the Paper Girls show team did such a great job of like keeping the spirit of the comic in there that even though it was stuff that maybe you know we didn't have in the comics, it felt like the comic. And so, you know, it's just like it's like deja vu. It really it makes you realize how wonderful these actors are because yeah. it's fun to get to see those moments where they still send us where the camera has stopped and then Mac suddenly transforms <laughs> into this completely different young woman. I was like, oh, but I thought they were these characters. Yeah. So, yeah, it's nonstop thrill. Right on, guys. Thank you. Have Thank a good you. show. Good luck, survive, endure.